If you've seen the hit TV show Ghost or you've seen Succession, then you're familiar with Asher Grotman's work and we're super lucky that he's voicing the main character Puck in Terrestrial. And as always, I don't want to waste time. Let's get to the conversation with Asher. Yeah, good morning. Hey. Good morning. <laughs> there he is. How are you? I'm good. Well, then let's not waste any time. Um, yeah, no. The self-serving question right off the bat, uh, what drew you to the project? Like what was exciting to you? Besides, you know, his friendship and like knowing things about what he's doing. Once you read the script uh, and, and you got into this, like what was interesting to you? Well, I will start with this just because it deserves to be said. I, I know Dimitri. I love Dimitri. I think he wrote a, a short film uh, that it could be. The, it was the shortest film that anyone could possibly do. That was just <laughs> brilliant. And so I am uh, enamored both with Dimitri as a person, but Dimitri as an artist. So any chance to work oh. with him, I'm, I'm down. Okay. Um, and then also, I think, you know, in terms of this particular project, um, <clears throat> the, you know, the kind of cycle of, of fatherhood, I think, spoke to me. Uh, mm -hmm. I do not have kids, but I'm certainly, you know, the heartstrings get pulled at the idea of, of um, living in someone's shadow and then trying to make your own mark inside that shadow. And and usually having to make that mark in a way that is not the way you were planning to make a mark, yeah. you know, uh, often, you know, this is a guy who is looking to find a way to make his uh, a name for himself externally in mm -hmm. the world and, and kind of in um, uh, a larger, you know, um, I don't want to say historical narrative, but like, you know, make an impact in society or, or, or in terms of fame or something like that. And then, yeah. The impact that it seems he's going to make to him feels very small, but then when suddenly he has a life in his hands, it's a very huge impact. Mm -hmm. So uh, the scope gets smaller, but the profundity gets gets uh, uh, exponentially larger. So that that uh, hit me a lot, and and of course, uh, you know, I think as any young guy, you uh, would resonate with um, <clears throat> just trying to make your own way. You know, mm -hmm. when when we got you involved in this project you were just kind of starting with ghosts um and oh, yeah. so in in many ways like since we since since we recorded this with you like your trajectory with this character is kind of aligned a little bit you know what i mean like wait you you play you play puck patters who's like he's an astronaut but he's also like he's a celebrity astronaut and he's mm -hmm. he's he's his his fame has risen um to to a societal impact like you said and so yeah. it's just kind of i'm just noticing a bit of a parallel that now you've at least you've gotten that that taste of what that's like and and you can mm. relate to that character even more i i think the journey i i think that the, the, there is a terror in the when you suddenly like get what you've always wanted you know <laughs> that, yeah, yeah. That, uh it's a deep terror um but at the same time, the journey that he's going on as as kind of being responsible for a life, uh, I have no idea what that's like. You you guys probably know a lot more of that than I do. But um, the last couple of years have been really validating, and and I think definitely uh, Puck would. I'm I'm doing what Puck was kind of thinking that he would like to have done. Right. <laughs> like that, he was like I was. I thought we were going to go over there, and instead I have this thing in my. <laughs> um, yeah. So uh, I, I'm very lucky in that regard. But also that clip uh, that Dimitri sent me that I wanted to play, that's when you're recording with him. To really have a rhythmic feel, like really separate the words, like, like, like stick up his butt, like that sort of thing. Um, you, why don't you, uh, just so, for time's sake. Can I, can I give you a, train. can I give you two passes at this real quick? Cause I think I know what you want. Yeah, 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 let's do it, let's do it. Let me just say, so stick up his butt, pompous dinosaur, he had his time. It's my time now, but no, he can't share the spotlight. Not the amazing one and only Commander Oberyn Patters. Yes, and really take your time between each, like, like make every single thing land and take a, your time with it. Um, and then on, uh, let it build towards the amazing Commander Oberyn Patters. Like, like make it really, like, explode or like land on that one like you're really mocking him great right, ready? stick up his butt pompous dinosaur he had his time it's my time now but no he can't share the spotlight not the amazing one and only commander Oberyn patters so 
question. Thanks for showing a clip where I'm like, yeah, 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 Dimitri, just just give me a second. I'll, I'll do it my, myself. Was, I loved it. I loved it. I thought it was awesome. I love the transformation from like, all right, like, all right, let me like, I'm reading and reading and then like the performance comes alive, like, oh, okay. And then, right. and then like, but then, uh, you know, and then I gave you like a slight little adjustment and you like nailed it. I mean, that's like, that's what a pro does. It's like, I thought it was Aww. a perfect example <laughs> of why you're awesome and, and how uh, good you are at this. I think working with you on this gave me a slow, you know, I, I, working in film and television, it's, it's usually, especially at most actors start in theater, where, which is a very oral medium. Yeah. And it's all about language. Uh, and that's usually because of the proximity of the, of the audience. Um, in film and television, the audience gets to be a lot closer and it's a visual medium because we're telling stories, you know, and pictures. And um, so it all becomes about behavior and then kind of switching into a third sphere where I don't I'm not responsible for any of the visuals mm. uh I'm just responsible to support those visuals uh and there's there's a much longer leash in terms of where you can go vocally because we're, we're playing with things that are you know um the sense I got from you was that not that there's a tone to it all I guess there is but you've created this visual world so what my barometer of like realistic or whatever, we were, you know, uh, um, can actually get expanded. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? Um, I get to play with it almost in a more like Shakespearean way that there's a, there's a, there's a broadness to it, um, which is fun. So I, I kind of learned that on the fly working with you on this. I think even that clip, uh, what was I'm noticing is I'm, I'm starting to get a little more physically mm -hmm. comfortable. Yeah. Cause like I've seen, I've seen the clips of, I mean, the best one is, uh, um, watching Mark Hamill do the Joker, and you see that he is like doing all yeah, this, <laughs> yeah. and uh, and I felt that in the in the shooting of it, I'm sure there there are moments of there where I, I'm I'm acting like a like a maniac physically, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. or or what also can happen is the opposite where where because Puck is so kind of like Argh! like it's it's so kind of worn, yeah. In him. yeah, he's kind of unexpressed in a way, mm -hmm. right? So that may be another thing that you can kind of see that. Ooh, yeah, yeah, yeah. That, so, so maybe that. I, cool. I, I get the freedom to play and, and uh, my, my, my body is suddenly free. You've been on, on an episode of Succession, right? Yeah. Were you observing that ensemble cast and like taking things in? Because you're also an ensemble cast with so many other actors. What was that? How was that different? Did you like pick some things like, oh, I want to use this for later? I, I learned a lot on that. Um, that's a, that's a really wonderful cast. And what was the coolest thing about it is that they all work so differently. Mm -hmm. um, Brian is lovely and he is like a theater guy. You can see his theater roots in him. Mm -hmm. uh, and he uses his voice, you know, brilliantly. Um, Kieran Culkin is, is like, everything that comes out of his mouth feels like it's improvised. Often, sometimes it is. Yeah, uh, where so there's like the joke here, and then he's gonna say that and probably try two or three of the jokes. He's so good at it. He's he's really fantastic. Uh, Jeremy is very, you know, I know there's been a lot written. Uh, mm -hmm. He's very controlled uh, and very everything is thought out and done. And he's kind of in his own in his space. Mm -hmm. um, and pe so people just work very differently, and and everyone works in a different way. And, uh, so being able to see like all those different kind of um, approaches kind of mix in one room and how they all play mm -hmm. was a lot of fun. That, that was a weird job for me. Uh, I love that show. I think it's a genius show and the writing um, mm -hmm. is fantastic. Uh, it was a tricky thing where um, that character I was playing, like his entire purpose was really just to exist. Yeah. You know what I mean? Yeah. Like he's not supposed to be this like, scary dude like mm -hmm. logan's the scary dude um he's just supposed to be this guy who you know is going to get access to everyone's phones and is just gonna do it that's it so like as an actor there i, I remember feeling like God, i really there's not very much for me to do and everyone is talking about how scary and how you know uh uh like i, I that character drives so much the plot of that episode Mm -hmm. but there was very little for me to do. So it was a fun mm -hmm. kind of lesson in, in actually having to kind of sit and observe uh, 
And um, I remember there was a scene that we shot that never made it into it. That was a very dark scene involving Tom. We, it, was a, it was a vague thing, but basically what we were in, this, it was a beautiful set where there was this pool, this empty pool at that, that place where we were. And we were all kind of standing over him and laughing at him as he stood at the, at the bottom of an empty pool. And it was just very sinister. Uh, and it didn't make the episode. I think it was just a swing. It was just a try something. Yeah. Um, but when he walks in that next morning to breakfast and he's kind of like, we're, we're playing that, oh, something happened that night. Mm -hmm. Um, and you take that scene out and it's actually kind of richer without that scene because it lets your imagination kind of go as to what happened. And I, I remember like my character kind of gave him a little bit of a smirk as he walked in, you know, and, and, that, and uh, yeah, that's always fun because I have a point of view, right? Yeah. But for a lot of it, my, uh, there isn't much of a point of view. I'm just there to do a job. Mm -hmm. I mean, that, that is a point of view, but, um, it's not as much fun as saying, oh, I know what you did last night, you know? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Uh, but I'll I'm tell you, the coolest thing yeah. about that show, sorry, I, 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 no, I, go ahead. the crew and they they, I think they usually shoot three cameras, or at least that was my experience. The, the way they kind of push in and push out or zoom in and zoom out mm -hmm. and th they kind of play jazz in that. And they're working with an already very kind of improvisational, improvisational is the wrong word, but very kind of, um, chaotic in the best way cast. And the camera kind of joins in that game. Mm -hmm. of where you're, you know, you're pushing in. So like that, those guys are master technicians. Yeah. So Which yeah, with, with that yeah. cast, you want to get as much coverage as you can in the moment because you, you know, depending on, you can connect the camera at any one of them at any moment and get like a master class of acting. Um, yes, but that's the thing, thing, right? Is, is you, yes, you, you, that's the risk that they, they take, which is you want to get as much coverage as you can, but they do those pushes, those punch-ins, yeah. which obviously cut down on your coverage. Mm -hmm. right so you're making a choice there you're saying i think it's going to land here and they push in to get it you know so it's it's a it, they're playing like high stakes poker like okay. there and it, and it works out so beautifully so puck patters you know celebrity uh hot shot astronaut living in the in the shadows of of his legendary mission commander you know father oberon patters who we haven't cast yet right now we we've only cast you um, you know, JD and I have been kind of talking about who do we want, who do we see as this like legendary hero character? Um, and we have our ideas, but since you're here, I wanted to get your input. Like, is there anybody that you have in mind that, that you want to play you know, your father that you want to have, um, that relationship with? Um, well, first of all, never ask an actor this question because we don't have any idea what we're talking about, but who do you want um, to be your father. Who do you want to be my father? Yeah. I mean, I, I brought him up earlier uh, just because I've seen him do, I've seen the video of him do his voiceover work. Um, I think Mark Hamill's amazing. And uh, yeah, uh, he's so good. I, I had a plea. He's a, a big ghost fan. And we're all like pleading yeah. for Mark Hamill to show, right. up and show up the art and play <laughs> our fathers. So maybe if he doesn't do it in Ghost, he'll, he'll come and, and do it in this. Um, Let's do it. But yeah, like when you see him do his, uh, do the Joker, like when you see the video of him actually doing it, it's, so good. Like they should, they should just, they should just sell videos of that. It's, it's amazing. <laughs> Asher, you're so patient. You're, you're. You oh must, no, you this know, is. You must go through interviews and stuff like that all the time. So I, I really appreciate that. But this is, I mean, you get to talk shop here. Like that, that's a four and a half minute. You know, get in, get out. This is always <laughs> because you get to actually talk about like what's, you know, the neurosis of all this process, all this. So it's a lot of fun. All right. Well, should we let Asher go? Yes. Yes. Okay. Thank you so much. Right. Again, thanks so much, be, guys. It's so interesting. It's really interesting to hear just a different perspective from like someone who actually, you know, does it for real and, and does it properly. But it's 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 so cool. So thank you. Thank you so much. No, thank you. This is the you know, this is the stuff that I, I sit and perseverate about. So it's always fun to uh, the commiserate with other people. All right. See you guys. Thank, thank you, you so much. Go Jaguars. Yeah, baby. <laughs> Bye. There you go. That was the end of part three in the description for part two and part one in case you haven't seen them. But on behalf of Dimitri and I, thank you for watching. I hope it was entertaining and interesting. We can't wait to move forward with this project. It's going to be awesome. And hopefully we can share more in the future.